trapping muskrats. We're in southern Minnesota. We've got a beautiful sunrise in front of us. Uh, we're out on the rat line. Um, you know, it's it's uh, creeping up on the middle of January, and uh, it's not a whole lot to do right now. And and uh, I, I love hitting the rats hard now, trapping these huts. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Hop on the ATV, you get some good ice, and and uh, you can just go and make a day of it. And uh, if the prices are right, make a few bucks. So we're going to check all of our traps today. And the plan is to check them, pull them, move them, and reset them. So we got to get busy. Feisty one. That's the thing, sometimes these sets don't drown them. They get so wrapped up in the vegetation inside the hut. I want to take a second. Uh, in Minnesota, we are allowed to trap inside the hut. But by law, and it is also good practice, you have to take wet vegetation from within the house and reseal the hole every time you go into it. Uh, it keeps the hut sealed up in case more rats are going to come in and out of it and use it. And like I said, it's just good practice. So, and there's something nice about Minnesota is you can trap inside the huts, but you got to make sure you pull more vegetation out and you, you seal this up tighter. What's going to happen is it's going to freeze. And it's the same thing as when you're spudding your hole in here and you and you set your trap in there. If you don't seal this hole back up, you're going to come back in the morning and your hut's going to be completely frozen. And you're not going to have a rat. So what I like to do, I like to carry the shovel with me. And when you get good snow like this, pack the snow over the hole also on top of it for, for extra insulation. It'll keep your traps open and firing. Another nice rat. I want to show you the set that I'm using here. What I've done is I've taken a piece of lath, wired a chain extension to the chain that's already existing on the trap. So you can see about how much chain I've got. Two and a half feet or so. And what I'm using it's just a regular old plain Jane one and a half coil spring. And the importance of that chain extension is when you got your trap set inside the hut, the trap fires when, when the, the rat triggers the, the pan. They go to leave one of their entrance holes and you need enough chain so they can get far enough down their hole where they drown. Now, granted, not all the time that happens, especially this year with the low water levels, but you can see we got a nice drowned rat. The set worked exactly the way it was supposed to be. I mean, you can get this chain and lath at, at your hardware stores, your lumber yards for, I mean, next to nothing. You can make an awful lot of these sets for, for real, real cheap. You know, you use your old coon traps and everything else that you use. Uh, uh, I've also got some number one coil springs that I use for some real small tight areas, but this is a really awesome trap for that. Uh, it's, 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 it's big for the rat, but the, the great part about that is you don't get a lot of ring offs with these high traps because you get a lot of high catches. Um, and what a ring off is, is a rat will flip out once they get caught in the trap and they'll twist and twist and twist and they'll twist their front foot, front foot right off. And uh, that's frustrating. You know, they heal up. I've caught a ton of rats without a front foot. Um, but this, this is an awesome setup that kind of helps with all those different aspects. It's a great set, so we're going we're gonna to dry this dude off and keep rolling. All right, I want to show you guys a cool little, uh, little trick here. We just pulled this rat out of the hut. It's sopping wet. It's completely saturated. But when you got good fluffy snow like this, you just give them a little snow bath and it dries them right up. Just rub it in there. I mean, really rub it in there. Puffy muskrat, it just it's, the snow sucks the moisture right out of it. You don't gotta worry. 
worry about them freezing together and everything. Uh, it's just, it really cuts back on the time once you get back to the, where you're going to skin them. You don't have sopping wet frozen rams. Alright, another thing that I like to do when it's cold like this, it's 12 degrees right now, which isn't too awfully cold. But your rats will freeze up on you by the time you get home and ready to skin them out. They'll be solid and then you got to wait and thaw them out. It's, it's just a mess. Normally you don't like stacking them up on top of each other. Rats get green belly really quick and what green belly is, is the bacteria in their stomach because they're, they're stomach is so thin-walled that the bacteria in their intestines actually starts to rot uh, the pelt, so you, which will cause slipping on your pelt, so you, and it's, you don't want that. But when it's this cold, you don't worry about it so much. So I use a nice black garbage bag, and I like to stack my rats in it. It does two major things. One, it keeps the rats from freezing to anything, and two, collects, it, it keeps them warm, it collects the heat, it absorbs the heat from the sun being the black bag, and the heat, the body heat that the rats already still have are going to be uh, stored and contained within the plastic bag, so it, it really does help keep them thawed out until you get home and you're ready to start skinning. something to you how we're setting these huts you know there's all different kinds of huts you got your huts in which the rats are actually denning in and then you have feeder huts well, the feeder huts are super awesome but they're hard to set because it's all water in the inside once you break through it's just all water so I just fold up the weeds and fold up the weeds what I do have and get enough of a bed to set the trap on but huts like this some of the huts are just too big and they're not even worth trying to get into because the chamber it's so deep in the hut you can't reach it. So what we do is we go around the hut and we spud in the hut and we're trying to find what's called the chamber. That's a little hollow void inside the hut where the rats are denning. And generally a good place to start is on the south southwest side because that's where it's getting all the sun and uh, that's where your hut's going to be the softest. And once you find, a, find the, the uh, chamber there's generally two, two runs going in and out of it. And then you have a high spot, which is called the platform. And you want to set your trap right in front of one of the runs, just right below the, the uh, uh, platform. So you just, once you get your hole in there like we got here, you just set your trap. And then what you do, Stick the trap down in there and you just put it in front of one of the runs. And that's it. Plug your hole back up with some wet vegetation and you're on to the next. Something that you really need to do when you're setting these huts is flag them. Two big reasons. One, you can walk around, you can walk around in these cattails for a long time like a chicken with its head cut off trying to find all your sets. This is going to tell you where they all are because I guarantee if you ain't got them, if you don't have your sets and your huts marked, you ain't going to find them all. Another big thing it does, it saves you time and other people time. If you roll into the place and you start setting huts and somebody's got huts all set and they ain't marked, you ain't going to know that, so you're wasting your time and their time. Another nice rat tell you one of the most important pieces of equipment that you can have to do this 
is some nice gauntlets. Get these black ones. I think they're 430s. They're thick. You don't want thin ones. I've gone through so many pairs of these. When it's cold, your hands get wet, everything starts freezing, the trap's slippery. You're going to pinch the glove in the trap. It's going to happen. And you don't want to make holes in them because then your hands get wet and you're freezing and you got to go in. So gauntlets, some really, really awesome thick heavy duty gauntlets are, are your best bet for doing this. Um, if you have crummy cheap ones, it, it'll make the day really short and, and you have a not good experience. Uh, just wear some uh, real thin gloves. I mean, they're like a dollar for for uh, little inserts. Your hands are warm. They're th the the rubber stick. They'll last forever. Keep rolling. And you might make a few bucks doing it. Gotta keep on. 